Hi, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Today we're working on our second Cheater Drunkard's Path block. We're going to be quilting this block with some wiggly lines. So let's take a look at our quilting design before we get started. So here's our quilting design for this week. It's just lots of wiggly lines. And if you're looking for where you can find this full-size quilting guide to mark your block, you can find it in the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern available from leahday.com. So this quilting guide is just lots of wiggles. We've got some echoes again in this quarter circle area and some wiggly U shapes. But about the only challenging spot will be working this really long wiggly line that runs all the way through the center of the block. Uh, the only challenging thing will just be simply trying to figure out how to feed it through your machine and which direction to work in. So let's get on the machine and see how this works in free motion. So the first thing I'm going to knock out is this second quarter circle that I've got on my block. And to do that, I'm going to be stitching right on top of my piecing line, that uh, top stitch line that we used to create this block. I'm going to start out there, and then I'm going to work my way inside of the area with my echoes and my wiggly U shapes. And there's not as much travel stitching in this block as our last quilting design. Uh, but of course you still want to kind of be really careful as you stitch over those uh, that initial piecing line just to stay on that line exactly. Of course I can barely see what I'm doing because my piecing line, my piecing thread was so dark it really blended in so even if you stitch off it's not the big not a big deal. Okay so I'm going to travel stitch down and come around with my echo. Basically just travel stitching and echoing and you can see how I'm leaving my hands in one place and able to stitch in all of these directions. I'm now flowing up and out. I'm kind of working with the design behind me and that's okay. It felt comfortable to leave my hands in place and I didn't feel the need to rotate and shift it around. But my hands are fairly wide apart in this situation and controlling the block perfectly when your hands are wide apart can sometimes be a challenge. You can bring your hands ever so slightly closer together and you might find you have a little bit more control. However, if your hands are really, really close together, you're not going to be able to quilt for very long before you have to shift your hands and move them around a little bit because you just won't have enough space in this area to quilt into. That's why you have to shift your hands so much. The thing to do is always kind of aim for Aim for what feels comfortable, but also understand that, at least at first, this might feel like you're a child learning how to color. Uh, you're learning how to write within the lines. And um, I've been watching my little boy learn how to write this year. He's in kindergarten. And he just hasn't got the control over his hands, over those fine muscle movements. And so staying within the lines uh, and being consistent, those are struggles for him but I'm sure as he gets more and more practice at it, it's going to improve with everything that he writes and colors. You know, when we look at a child's drawing, we're charmed by how cute it is. Uh, and we know that the skills are gonna be there, they're gonna come, uh, and then one day he's gonna be able to do everything perfectly. So I guess we kinda need to bring that same mentality to our quilting as well. So I'm just flowing through these, stitching right on the line. And I want to show you, I had a mistake in my other little corner here. I'm going to back up the camera and hopefully be able to show it to you. I had a, kind of just a stitch off in this corner and it, it didn't look good. And so what I did was simply continue to add more and more lines <laughs> into the area. And I did a little bit of travel stitching along that line and then filled in the area basically. And that worked, that fixed it. Um, I think we'll probably just balance that out by doing the same thing on this end. So I'm just going to stitch over. And I kind of try and mimic the same mistake I made. What I did was I kind of lopped off the corner of the circle and it didn't look as good. And so now I'll fill it in with those echoes and I think it will balance out with the first side. 
when in doubt, just simply add more stitching, add more fiber, and you can hide a lot in thread. I'm going to do some travel stitching right here so it balances with the other one. Um, when in doubt, just add more quilting. Uh, that's not perfect either, but I think the two of them together just add a little touch of something different to the block. Okay, so now I'm going to travel stitch out and start knocking out these wiggly lines. Now these areas, you're going to have to work off travel stitch probably I'm gonna knock out that little line travel stitch knock out that little line and then I'll start wiggling all the way across with this longer line these might be a little challenging so let me stitch to it with a wide angle on the camera so you can see everything I do I'm gonna travel stitch down first and one thing notice how I hold the edges of the fabric I kind of am almost not I wouldn't use the word pulling but I'm putting pressure and tension with my fingers like this. I'm also pressing down, so I'm actively pressing down and pulling slightly out with my index finger and thumb. If I didn't have gloves on, and these gloves have a grippy tip on the ends, if I didn't have gloves on, I wouldn't be able to really get this kind of purchase and control over the block because my fingers don't naturally stick to cotton fabric, so the gloves really do help. So I'm kind of just pulling, and that adds tension to that edge and allows me to stitch down without losing control in that area. Okay, so now I'm going to knock out these two little lines first. And travel stitch down carefully. Listen to the speed of my machine as I slow it down. I'm not using that speed slider. I'm not adjusting, you know, the whole speed of my entire machine to do that. I'm just controlling my foot pedal with my foot, and that allows me to slow the machine down and have more control in those areas. Okay, now let's knock out this long line. What I'm probably going to do is stitch down and then when it starts to feel uncomfortable for my hands to make the movement, I'll shift my hands. So I'm going to start out just wiggling on the line. The only issue is that it's just a large space to cover. And whenever you decide that, hey, that's far enough, that's too close to my fingers, whatever, just shift your fingers, shift your hands. And here's, let's actually talk about this. Let's talk about starts and stops because this is a complete curve and you might have a situation where you are, every time you start and stop, you see like a long stitch or a stitch off or something like that. How do you start and stop smoothly? Well, the first thing to keep in mind is that uh, don't obsess about it. If you, if you make big stitches, don't go and rip them out. The best thing to do is start and stop often enough that it becomes routine. So I'm holding the quilt, my hands are in place, I'm feeling pretty good about that. And whenever I start stitching, I take a few small stitches and my hands aren't moving very much. As my hands come up to full speed, my machine speed comes up to full speed. The two are in balance. And so what my foot is doing is it's slowly applying pressure to the foot pedal. There is always this balance between the speed of the machine and the movement of your hands. Starts and stops are a struggle because you have no speed on the machine and your hands haven't been moving. So you have to kind of get both of them started at the same time. The best thing to do is start slowly and transition into your regular speed. You're going to find that middle speed that you like, that feels comfortable to you. Um, but getting there without a noticeable start stop, and I'm not talking about breaking thread, just simply you know, stopping in the middle of a curve and then repositioning your hands to start stitching again within that same curve, you can have some just noticeable larger stitches or a stitch off of the line. Whatever happens, that's normal. It's totally normal. It drove me crazy when I first started quilting. Um, but do you understand the best thing to do is just kind of be focused on what you're doing, slowly move your hands, slowly increase the speed of your machine. And this is something that I've been working with Josh quite a lot on, is instead of using that speed control, that speed slider on the machine, to instead find those multiple speeds within the foot pedal. That's basically going from a very, you know, no pressure, your foot's off the foot pedal, to putting your foot on the pedal and slowly increasing the speed to a medium speed, slowly letting back if you're travel stitching. It's a very fine movement. If you don't have a lot of control over your leg or your foot, your ankle, um, I've heard of quilters that have moved the foot pedal and operate it between their legs, like they're squeezing their knees together, or even under their hip, they're kind of lifting up their hip. There's multiple options here. 
but it is a fine movement and it is something that comes with time and practice and it's something that I think um, every time I sat down at the sewing machine at least when I was growing up there were two speeds completely slow like you know needle going up and down like maybe once a minute <laughs> and then rock it fast I put the foot down and pedaled the metal and that was it you got to find those medium speeds because that's where your control for free motion quilting is going to come in so let me knock out a little bit more quilting and maybe I'll speed up the video so you can see how I flow the, through this area entirely For this block I really hope that you enjoyed learning these wiggly lines and that little tip about starting and stopping this is one of those things that once you get it down it will become so routine that you won't think about it until you get to that point it will feel like a struggle and to be honest it drove me completely crazy but please don't make the same mistake I did I was constantly stopping and picking up my seam ripper and picking out my stitches obsessively because I wanted absolute perfection on my quilts. What I ended up getting was extremely, extremely frustrated and down, you know, down on myself, down on my quilts. And I look back at those times and, you know, there was really no point to it. Uh, everyone starts at the beginning and we all have to kind of build that build those muscles and build those abilities as we go. So I hope that starting and start, stopping and starting become easier for you as you go. So my name is Leah Day and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks Quilt Pattern and learn how to piece and free motion quilt with us through 42 beautiful quilt blocks. You can pick up your pattern at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.